Hello and welcome to the We Are Power podcast. Every week I talk to the most amazing individuals. Every single person has that different story, different pathway, different adventure, as I always like to think. And for us, it's always about having that behind the scenes conversations, beyond the bio, for you to be able to take away your top tips, your takeaways, your your life hacks. And we're also looking for those quotes that we want to put on the side of a tote bag and t-shirt as well, by the way. But every week I am delighted and do have the best job in the world. And this week is no exception. I am joined by full name, Jessica Page Lennon, (laughs) um, from 2023 Miss Universe Great Britain to Mm -hmm. serial entrepreneur, or maybe the other way around, actually, we'll get into that, marketing (laughs) professional and campaigner for promoting role models to girls. Jessica Page Lennon, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Simone. You can call me Jess. Oh. We, we can get close and fr- we can get all friendly today. Yeah, of course, just call me Jess. Oh, thank <laughs> you so much for coming in. You're so, welcome. how on earth did you go from a decade in pageantry into entrepreneurship, into campaigning? Oh. Where do we even go? <laughs> you know what? I don't even know where to start. I feel like it's all kind of merged into one, really. But I guess my entrepreneurship probably comes from when I was younger. My dad always had his own his own businesses. I remember when I was about 15, my dad had a business on Egbeth Road. It was called Famished. And he had me working part-time there on a weekend when I was about 15, buttering the sandwiches that he would give out of a lunchtime. So I had a little deli sandwich bar. So I guess the entrepreneur side of me is kind of always see, I've always seen my dad kind of have his own businesses and, you know, have that freedom of being able to kind of look after his own diary, take holidays when he wants and have that freedom. And um, obviously it comes with a lot more than that as well. But I guess uh-huh. that side has come from there. And then my pageantry side has almost come from, and my mum actually did some pageants when she was younger. Very different to the way that it is now. But I remember, um, oh, we used to flick through, she used to cut some newspaper articles out of like newspapers and magazines. And she had this like little portfolio. And I remember when I was younger, I would look through this, this portfolio of her little snippets from when she was younger. And I always used to think, wow, she looks so good with these. She just had this like tiny waist and this swimsuit. And I used to be like, wow, I want to get on this stage and do all these amazing things. And glamorous dresses so yeah I guess it comes from a bit of both both of them yeah but a decade in pageantry it is not just the glamour is it (laughs) oh no it definitely isn't and you know I could talk forever about pageantry and how it's changed my life and how you know I definitely wouldn't be the woman I am today without without that industry and I definitely think there's a lot of stereotypes on it um but yeah I started when I was 17 and I entered Miss Liverpool and um, it came from when I was younger, I was always really tall at school. And I always say, the boys never used to fancy me. And they used to be like, oh, she's so tall. And I used to hate it, I used to hate being tall. And um, my mom was like, why don't you try and do like a pageant? Because the girls were normally pretty tall in like modeling and pageants. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'll give it a go. Um, and then, yeah, ever since I kind of have this, must have this competitiveness in me because honestly, I always say it was always the bridesmaids, never the bride. And I would always come second or third or fifth and I would never win. And it wasn't until last year when I turned 28, which I actually won my first ever competition, which is also the best competition in the UK as well. So save the best till last really, didn't I? But what did you do to deal with those kind of setbacks yeah. along the way? Oh, you know, I think this... There were so many times um, throughout, I guess, I guess coming second or third is probably a little bit worse because you're almost like, what can I do to get to that point of winning? What else can I do? You know, and the amount of times I would be there on stage and I would be like, I'm the best version of myself here. So what else can I give? Um, And, you know, pageantry has taught me, I mean, just a bit of a background on it. I'm not sure if you know too much, Simone, but Back in the day, pageantry was almost like they would hold it in a butlins and they would make everybody line up along the pool and they would measure your waist and your hips and whoever was had the most beautiful curls and the, most, the nicest hair. And, you know, it's changed so much now. And I guess, you know, what is, who, who says what's beautiful and what isn't? And, you know, I think if you look at the previous winners of Miss Universe Great Britain, they are all so different in so many ways um, and they all physically look very different. Um, but in terms of everything else that goes alongside it, which is where we've probably come such a long way in pageantry, is the, the everything that you have to do outside of your life in order to kind of succeed in that industry. And when I went to Miss Universe last year, some of those women are the most 
highest achievers I've ever met in my entire life. They are incredible public speakers. They just almost own a room when they walk into it. They speak several languages. They have seven, eight degrees. They have multiple businesses. They're doctors, they're lawyers, business owners. And they are some of, honestly, some of the most incredible women I've ever met. And I think we don't talk enough about that part of the industry. Um, but yeah, I guess I've just, I must just have some kind of resilience in me to just make me keep going over the years. And you, you talk about that perception yeah. and you put an Instagram post, post mm-hmm. out recently. I you're did. Not, you know, like it's, it's not just about the clothes and the oh, makeup. No. It's about the insight that people don't see yeah, what goes yeah. on behind the scenes. Yeah, it's no, not definitely. just one person. Yeah. And, you know, I think over the time, over those 10 years where, that I've done pageantry, I have learned a lot about how to succeed and how to interview in a way that can really bring the most out of you. And I think as women, one thing that this industry has taught me is that as women, we're always told to not speak about our successes, almost that we shouldn't brag because if we brag, we're, you know, we're talking about ourselves too much and it's kind of like, all right, calm down, you know don't brag about yourself, but actually I think it's the opposite. I think we should be taught to to talk about our successes rather than our weaknesses. And I almost feel like that, that industry, you know, for example, when you go to do an interview for a pageant, you are given two minutes, three minutes to sell yourself essentially. And, you know, there's not really any other setting in which we teach women and, you know, where we teach young people in general to sell themselves in a short period of time like that. And um, I think one thing that I do now with women is when I train them in the settings for pageantry or I do like personal coaching is I almost want to know about their life. I want to know about what you've been through and what makes you tick. And that's why when I, I shared that quote recently about all the achievements of these women, honestly, if people really took the time to invest in and find out about what these winners are and what they do for society, you'd be blown away by some of their achievements. And. Um- and I think that you, you said, uh, you know, I don't know a lot about pageantry. It's mm-hmm. mainly because I'm five foot, I think. I was, I was in Size does not matter. <laughs> Height does not matter. Hair colour does not matter. But it's interesting you say you were on a stage at a really young age mm. and you talk about the resilience and the confidence. Mm. We, we talk a lot around gender equality and mm. I, I know we'll talk about mm. your coaching business as well, but there's something about that self-belief. Mm. Do you think you were taught that or mm. learned that without even realising that it was setting you up for a business life? I mean, I guess that's probably a personality trait that not everybody has. And I think I must have some kind of resilience in me that just makes me want to come back and come back again. And I guess I am a competitive person in that way because there are people that almost probably would come so close. I mean, I I competed, I actually won th- on my third time at Miss Universe Great Britain. So, you know, I can imagine the pro- people at that point probably would have gone, I'm not going to, not going to bother again. So I guess it almost is a personality trait of mine, you know, that competitiveness that no, I'm going to prove to myself and I'm going to prove to everybody else that I can get to that point. Um, and I, I think that does reflect it in, in my business personality as well. And in my entrepreneur side, because I mean, it, the amount of roller coaster that like <laughs> owning a business is a roller coaster like this, isn't it? So I guess you have to have that resilience in that, in that respect. And that probably does come from, from my dad. Um, cause I've seen him, you know, try different businesses over the years and, what you get out of it at the end is worth it, in my opinion. And sometimes, you know, the road to success is not easy. But when you get there, I feel like when you've had the failures or when you've had those down days, when you do have the up days and the successes, it almost makes it worth it a little bit more because you've had that journey to get there. And you've talked about your dad. Has he, mm-hmm. has he been a real role model for you? Yeah, I mean, from from a perspective of a business owner, I saw dad... Saying that though, you know, he always he always says to me, I wish I had you because obviously I work in marketing now. And he's like, I wish I had you then when I had my businesses because you would have really helped me <laughs> out when I, if I knew about social media back then. Um, but yeah, no, dad, dad's always brought out that creativity, that freedom side of me. And my mom, on the other hand, has taught me about this. She's always been with companies for a very long period of time. She's very successful. She's won awards for for what she does. So they've almost, the two of them kind of have instilled in me these values of how important it is to work hard and maybe stick to something you want, but also, you know, don't be afraid to try something new out. You know, what's the end of the world? If it doesn't go wrong, you can try again. So I guess the two things have kind of played a massive role in my life. And I'm an only child. Um, My mum was actually told she couldn't have children. So when they had me, I think it almost made 
was a really tight knit family and they've supported me in everything. So yeah, no, they're massive role models to me. Yeah. Uh, and you talk about entrepreneur, entrepreneurship being that roller coaster. So, mm. so what's it like to be a serial entrepreneur then? Yeah. <laughs> so I actually um, set up my first business in COVID when I was 23. And I actually set up because I came from a hospitality background and um, I actually was working in marketing and hospitality, but the end goal for me felt so far away because I had to work my way up in that industry. And I remember the moment I chose to work for myself was I was working 65 hour weeks in a role where I was meant to be marketing, but actually I was also a server and I would also get stuck in with the events and I was business development. And I just thought, am I really going to get to this point in my career that I want to get to if I stay here? And um, I remember my business partner at the time, he found this idea when he was traveling and it was the idea of a cheesecake on a stick. And we were toing and froing about whether we wanted to produce this dessert concept, which is a cheesecake on a stick. And um, luckily at the time I was furloughed. Um, and I know a lot of people during COVID actually decided to set their own business up. And I think it almost gave people this opportunity to explore their creativity and their hobby and kind of turn it into a business, which is really great. Um, and because I was furloughed, I had a lot of all this time on my hands, but also had the money coming in as well that I could invest in the business. And I just, I, one day I just turned around um, and I said, right, I've, I've got this time on my hands. Let's just give this business a go. And we grew our business to, I think we were turning over about a quarter of a million in our second year. And it purely was, I remember we started uh, with 200 pounds and we turned a box bedroom in the house into a kitchen that was EHO, stand, EHO standards and health and safety standards. And uh, we turned it into this like mini cheesecake factory where we would, we would just make like hundreds and hundreds of cheesecakes a day. And then we grew it to a quarter of a million in two years. And we had two biz two shops. We did wholesale. We did um, late night delivery. And we did, we had the two front of house shops as well. And um, I think that that almost showed me that if you put your mind to something, you really can do it. And I almost understand the risk to women as to why they don't set up a business. Because, you know, I think, at the time I was quite lucky because I was 23 and I wasn't ready to have a family. But I guess, you know, now at 28, taking that risk to start a business as a woman who potentially might want to start a family and, you know, has to think about whether she wants to give up that maternity pay that you would get from working full time for someone is, is really difficult. Um, and I, I, I almost understand that that's why a lot of women don't go into business. And I think that's where we need to find a little bit more support in terms of providing entrepreneurs and business owners with a little bit more security to take that risk. And in, where have you gone to for support? Oh, I mean, I definitely feel like there's a gap in the market for that still. But um, I did use a lot of support from the Prince's Trust. The Prince's Trust, obviously, they actually offer people up to the ages of 30 with kind of business advice. They offer, um, I think they gave grants out um, and just kind of connect you and give you the right information that you need. But, you know, going on to th that kind of business support, I think growing up when I was at school and I was being taught about business, I was taught about how to open a bank account. And like Simone, I remember when I went to open a bank account, the bank did it for me. I didn't do anything. I just sat there and gave them my name and my passport and they opened it for me. And I didn't need to do that at school. But what I needed at school when I look back now is someone to tell me about the law behind opening a business. Someone needs to tell me about those things that you really need to look at. And the reason why I ended up losing my business, which was my dessert business, was because my partner at the time I didn't actually want me to become a shareholder of that business. And I actually had spent two and a half, three years of my life growing this business. That was my baby. And I lost that business because I didn't know how important it was to be a shareholder in a business. And, you know, I'm not a, not a partner in that business anymore. And I stepped away. But if I was at school and I'd have been told about shareholder agreements and I'd been told about those difficult conversations that you need to have when you're setting up a business, maybe it would have been a different story. And when you talk to me about role models and, and things like that, I think this is why these kind of conversations need to be had a little bit more to kind of 
make people aware of these things that they need to do when they start a business? And over the years, I've had so many conversations yeah. with people who've gone, you know what, I've, I, I went to uni and I kept a credit card in my in my drawer because I didn't really know yeah. what to do or how uh, to manage it. Yeah. We had a wonderful Sharon Davis, one of our, our previous trophy holders, shall I say, mm -hmm. uh, and she's chief exec of Young Enterprise. Yeah. And her mission is about growing that financial mm. literacy mm. at school mm. because whether or not you go and become a business owner, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we should be teaching our young young emerging talent to be mm -hmm. entrepreneurs if mm -hmm. you know as well mm -hmm. as entrepreneurs mm -hmm. so how do you go into that business and innovate within mm -hmm. there so mm -hmm. it, it it all comes to play but we don't get that yeah do we? we don't get that and you know i think as much as business is quite a, a um, highly chosen subject in schools i still think that there is room for industry professionals to go in to educational sectors go into schools colleges universities and actually teach some kind of um sector specific subject because I think who really is it best to learn from other than the horse's mouth you know and I think it's great that we have these teachers that study business they go to university they study business and then they go back in to schools without almost going out to be business owners or to be self-employed. So, you know, I think it's great to be able to, you know, have that educational knowledge, but where is that industry knowledge that we're teaching 15, 16 year olds who are about to make the biggest decision of their life about whether they want to, who, what they want to do, where they want to go. And, you know, as much as I'm very grateful for my degree that I've got, maybe if I'd have felt like it was less risky to work for myself, I might have done that earlier than I did. So when your business came to an end mm -hmm. and you didn't just lose your business, but you suddenly lost all this other stuff and probably yeah. frustration that, why yeah. didn't you know that? Yeah, yeah. What did you do? How did you bounce back from that? Oh, you know, Simone, it was really hard. It was a really hard part of my life, actually, because alongside my pageantry, I had built this personal brand where I was really going out and speaking to young people about how to be a business owner. And I was that was a massive part of my personal brand. So I had my business that I was running as well as kind of trying to build my personal brand from a pageantry perspective, because I knew that my end goal was when I win this title of Miss Universe Great Britain one day, I want to be able to do that with this kind of value that I can add, which was as a businesswoman, how to kind of encourage more young women to go into business. So almost when I lost my business, I almost felt like, why do why will people want to listen to me? I've lost my business. So what am I going to show? You know, like I, I don't have this successful business anymore. And I, I did feel like I lost a little bit of my identity really. And it took a lot for me to kind of realize that actually those what what happened to me within that business actually just amplified my story and kind of gave me a little bit more reason to speak about it and what and to teach people. Um, but it took me a long time to to almost go back to networking events because so many people knew me for for a long time of having this really cool dessert brand, and then one day it was just all gone. And I had to explain that it was quite raw at the mm. time as well because whenever I do anything, I'm I put everything my all into something. So. When I lost that, I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I'm absolutely devastated. Um, and, you know, the truth behind it is I struggled and I had to go back into working full time to build that money pot up again in order for me to go and, and set something else up again. And, and now one thing I've learned from that experience is... I now work full time for someone else. I have a freelance social media business. I am launching my um, agency for professional women. And I also have my coaching business. And I do believe that having multiple streams of income is so important to kind of allow you to have that financial freedom and just kind of relax a little bit with all these multiple streams of income coming in. But I, I think like that part of my life was really hard. But again, you know, it goes back to that resilience that I think I have inside of me. And I guess, you know, like I said, you have these re these really low dips in your life and it does come and say, just it goes up and down, it goes up and down. But then that low dip in my life almost spared me on to go and win Miss Universe Great Britain because I lost my business in the December and I won Miss Universe Great Britain in the July. And when I went into my interview to win Miss Universe Great Britain, I was so honest and raw. And I said, six months ago, I would have come in here a totally different person. Six months ago, I would have come in and I would have said, I've got this business. I'm a very successful business owner, but actually I come at you now with a different perspective. And that is I've learned and I know now what I need to teach other people. And I think almost that's what allowed me to win because I was so honest and about my story. 
Um, so I guess, you know, everything happens for a reason. And I say this all the time, you know, what's meant for you will not pass you by. And clearly that business was not meant for me at that time. And I was meant to walk away. We do a lot of work with undergrads and further education students. Yeah. And actually when we bring our people from all walks of life, you mm -hmm. know, sort of senior in their business, on their way up entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. what is always the most encouraging mm -hmm. is that from the student's perspective is for them to hear from when things haven't gone right. Yeah, yeah. Because especially when you're at a point at that early stage in your career mm -hmm. or before your career and you suddenly hear that someone hasn't had it all mm -hmm. because they look yeah, fabulous course, or because they've got a great story or their personal brand. Yeah. But to hear it's not all right is so refreshing mm -hmm. on honesty. So that honesty thing is, is, is so key. And is that... Yeah. And this is, you drive a campaign now, don't mm -hmm, you? Mm -hmm. Which is yes. all around encouraging, um, yeah. you know, sort of young girls and role models, yeah, no, which definitely. is at the heart of everything we do. Yeah. I think, so So when I when I went through that period of my life, I started, uh, well, actually I started Take Care Lead um, before that happened to me because I just wanted to encourage conversations between different business owners, uh, also like women in STEM, um, women in finance and just kind of maybe stop covering things with roses and actually have proper conversation. Um, and I think, again, this goes back to me saying how we really need to hear from people who work within industry, because without that, we, we don't really teach properly. You know, not everything is great. You know, I think it's important to, in order for us to allow young people to take the right routes in life, we need to tell them the good and the bad, you know? And I think you're so right when you've just said that they they value honesty. You know, we they value when someone says, you know, it's not going to be great all the time, but if if this is what you love, then you'll almost come out the other side no matter what. So Take Care Lead originally started because I wanted to just encourage these conversations and it's almost kind of grown from there into now I do my Take Care Lead coaching where I kind of work with women to kind of figure out what they give, what their advocacy is, what their values are. Because honestly, I think a lot of women don't really know who they are and what they stand for. And, you know, the amount of women that I'll speak to, like, for example, I spoke to um, uh, a young a young girl the other day and she was talking to me about her story. Of, she was like, well, I don't really know. I don't really know what I do that's, that's different. And I was like, well, take me through your life. I want to know your childhood, you know, where does this start from? And she was talking to me about how she's a massive gym, gym person, gym freak. And she said, I use this because my parents went through a divorce and I use this as a way for me to cope with being able to go through this. But also it gives me a time to kind of switch off for the rest of, of what's going on in my life. And then we, we, from that, we built this story about what her values are and her, how she has this determination to keep going. And now she will use this in her personal brand going forward. And I think, again, Take Her Lead has now just evolved into kind of me being a way that where I can kind of help women in figuring out who they are and what they stand for. And a lot of the time it helps them to kind of redirect their, their career journey a little bit as well. And because, you know, they say that you change your career like four times in your entire life, which is just crazy. But, you know, and I think whenever we do, we always think, oh my God, no, I can't, I can't do that. And I can't change careers. But actually it's actually quite refresh refreshing and healthy to do that. And that's why I love this podcast because yeah. everyone has that different story, of that course. different adventure, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. What's your superpower? My superpower, oh my goodness. Do you know what? I, I definitely think I have a few. Um, I am a really good listener. And also I would say I'm a good public speaker. Um, I think, you know, one thing that from uh, the, the weekend just gone, I've just handed over my title as Miss Universe Great Britain. And the, the feedback I got from the women that spoke to me, they were like, you just, you've been quite normal and humble and you've just kind of listened to us and listened to our story and I guess I think listening can be a massive it's a massive benefit to a lot of people because you could, I think you can give advice until you listen so yeah I would say my superpower is just being a good listener and yeah. what advice would you give back to your younger self when oh. you're buttering that bread for your dad in the sandwich shop and he's telling you you haven't reached the corners probably mm. yeah <laughs> yeah that's so true do you know what I would say um I think I, do, I think I might have said this quote to you, you know, what is meant for you will not pass you by because, um, and I just live by that quote now. And I think as much as I tried for so long to win Miss Universe Great Britain, if I hadn't have won, something else would have just been around the corner for me anyway. And I would have, it would have 
been for a reason that that wasn't right for me at that time. Doesn't mean that it's not right for me at some point, but I do believe that whatever's going on in your life at that point is meant meant to happen. And if and sometimes we don't always, you know, achieve our dreams, but that might be because it's not meant to be, not meant to be for us. Um, but yeah, what's meant for you will will not pass you by is what I would probably tell my 15 year old self. And you are a coach, you're mm-hmm. an advocate, mm-hmm. uh, you're an entrepreneur, business owner, obviously just those. What's next? <laughs> what oh, else is going in that that's basket? That's a big question, that's <laughs> Um God, I, do you know, I, I guess... I guess since since handing over Miss Universe Great Britain, I haven't really had a chance to really think about this, but I would definitely just love to kind of share my story a bit more. And since I've been doing a lot more of my coaching, I think to myself, I should have studied psychology or something like that, you know, because thinking about it now, I actually love just having conversations with people. I love just speaking to people and hearing about their stories. But yeah, I definitely think I want to move into more of a... um, like a teaching, coaching perspective, really, and a, maybe more of a, a speaking role. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm just kind of, I'm open to see where life takes me at the moment. Yeah. But I'm, I've definitely, st- I've decided to say yes to everything this year. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'd, That's what I want to try and do. That was definitely my first on train to kind of entrepreneurs say yes and work out mm, later. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely got me into trouble. Because I used to be a bit of a riskier <laughs> person. I don't know about you, but I think I definitely, when I first started in business, I was like, oh my God, I don't know if we can do that. And I think I've now become a little bit more like, do you know what? We'll just give it a go. We'll try it. And I'm glad that I've kind of become a little bit more like that. I definitely could be more like that, but, you know, just saying yes to everything. If somebody, if one of my friends asked me to go to Parma, I'm going tomorrow. (laughs) Um, Is that what happens? Is that how you got into scuba diving? Do you know what? <laughs> right. Well, actually, this just goes to show how varied pageantry is. So one year I was offered an opportunity to do a pageant called Miss Scuba United Kingdom. And yes. oh, who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? And actually it was, I just finished competing for my second year at Miss Universe Great Britain. And I just wanted to have a bit of fun. And somebody approached me and they said, there's a competition. And basically you get a free scuba diving license. We'll take you to Fuerteventura for the week and you'll dive, you'll learn to dive, you'll meet all these amazing people. And I thought, yeah, of course I'm going to do it. So I actually flew to Fuerteventura and they paid for me to do my scuba diving license. We did some, we did a full week of diving. We saw sharks. It was amazing. So yeah, that's another reason why I'm such an advocate for pageantry because I travel the world. I have all these skills, um, but yeah. So that's that's how I got my scuba diving license. Who knew? Um, Who knew? Jessica Page Lennon, what is, even at such a young age, what is your legacy that you're going to leave behind? <gasps> oh, you're asking me some tough questions here, Simone. Um, but do it with a smile. Look at that. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> my legacy. You know, I think, I guess I just want to be known for, you know, never giving up on your dreams. Um, I think no matter how many times life just wants to tell you no, this is not for you. I guess I almost want to just be known for whether or not I succeed. I always gave everything a hundred percent and I just kept going. Um, because, you know, I'm so aware that I'm in a very lucky position to have won the biggest competition in the UK and to go to represent my country on an international stage. And it was a dream of mine since I was 14 years old, but I'm also aware that there's a lot of girls out there that don't get that opportunity. And one thing that I want people to know about my story is that it didn't come straight away. It, it There was a lot of ups, there was a lot of downs. And as much as maybe I show and like we all do on social media, how great life can be, you know, it's not, it's not all like that. There, there is ups and downs and almost just remember that you'll get there eventually and it will all work its, itself out. Yeah. More honesty. It's that honesty yeah, and authenticity. Yeah, of course, of course. Jess. Thank you so much for joining us in the We Are Power studio. I have loved our adventure from pageantry to entrepreneurship to 
I'd be devastated too. Cheesecake on a stick. I, I mean, know, that's right? just it's genius, delicious. right? You but, never you know, know. Might but, bring it back 2.0. But, oh, no, no, no. There'll be something way <laughs> better. Uh, thank you for all your tote bag quotes as well. We love them all. I think we'd be now <laughs> expanding into T-shirts as well. But okay. seriously, I think the, the the messages and the lessons that you learn, irrespective of what your journey is, mm. I think the more that you can pass that on, the more that you can use your voice mm. to amplify and to share what you do, it motivates and inspires others. So... Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh. And I've been I've been looking at We Are Power Women for a long time. And, you know, it's great to be able to speak about my journey and hopefully inspire other people. Always. You know, we're always a big fan. Everyone is a role model. Yeah, of Everyone course. is a role model. And if one person goes away and does one thing differently or says that yes mm. and works out later or doesn't worry because yeah, it's not going to yeah. pass you by. No. It's there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you so man. much. And thank all of you for watching uh, and listening. We love our weekly podcast. We love these different stories. We are so immensely uh, just sort of motivated, inspired by every single conversation. I hope you are. Please do join in the conversation on all of our socials, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. We are power underscore net and Facebook and LinkedIn. We are power. Please do leave us a review. We love those. And please reach out and share and celebrate we'd love to hear from you thank you so much for joining you my name is Simone and this is the We Are Power podcast